So, it should be. If you click on the calendar now, you should see. Oh, my password. Oh, my freaking password is. Is that what the, the crossroads 5518? Yeah. Probably. Can try email or password. Kiss my butt. Okay, let's go back to the calendar. This shit's just about as annoying as trying to do fucking, uh, Newsletters. Open the Cisco WebEx into your email address. Oh, I'm meeting. Okay. Meeting. Recording is in progress. How, how come it says you're owner? Hang it, hang it up now. How come it says you're owner? Um, that's you. The Civic League spelled that way is you. Lee with a capital E, but then I got right below that, owner. I'm not seeing that on mine. Hold on a second. Can you hear me? Yeah, see, you, for some reason, you tried to, you took it as owner. You still there? I'm here. If I uh, just. on the link that was in the calendar. Yep. Daniel just came in. Hello, Daniel. I don't know why you say it says owner, Sherry, but. I don't know, but now I can't get video. You have a camera, right? Yep. Now you should see me. I see you. <laughs> okay, I guess, I guess, uh, I'm going to say Daniel's Dan Gregor. Yes, I do believe so. Dan, you there? Kind of. Still working on it. Okay. Yeah, we all are. But somehow yeah. Sherry, tried, Sherry took over as owner. Oh, Dan's I don't know now. how. Yeah, it could be a problem. It says Crossroads Civic League host with the capital E. That's me. So there you go. But yet, when I see owner, I see uh, Thomas just came on. I see Thomas. Hey. Sherry can't get her camera to work right now, guys. So I saw Daniel's camera come up. I'm trying to get my camera to. Any uh, suggestions on the camera there, Gary? Um, look under your settings, Sherry. That's what I had to do, and it it changes it there. Settings on my computer or settings in the WebEx? Set, settings in the WebEx. Um, probably preferences. There was a settings icon in 
I don't have that now because, of course, I show up. And Sherry, what you're doing is showing up as owners because that's what you chose for a name. I just figured it out. Okay. Because I didn't change it. That was what was already there. Right. Okay. We go out and go back in and then that'll be gone or? I, I couldn't really care. Right. You, you like to own the Civic League, so that's okay. Okay. We've got Sherry as the owner, and Thomas. So we're still with and everybody else. Since we cannot connect to your webcam, it is either improperly installed or using it in another application. You're probably using it in um, WebEx, so maybe. Well, isn't that what we're doing? Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work for you, Sherry. I've never had a problem um, before. I'm not going to touch that. Can you see me now? We, we don't see you. Now I see. Okay. You know that? I don't see Daniel. Is that better? No, you're still out, Daniel. There we go. There we go. Now we see everybody. Hi. 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 Hi, everybody. Is Thomas? Yeah, we lost Thomas at the moment, but I think he'll try to come back. We got Sherry there. Me. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> Ducky. Ducky. <laughs> well, that's not good. Now, so to let everybody mean? to let everybody know, this is being recorded, so we have it for posterity. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Who are you wearing a mask for? For the fact of. If you'd like. Thomas is back. So basically, we're getting there. Um, I will text Andrea and see see if she's. Uh huh. Uh huh. I heard you have to watch what's happening in the background. Yeah. Is there a way to get everybody uh, on my page at the same time? They're at the bottom, Sherry. I can't tell you from, and they show up as a line. Screen. I get you full screen and everybody else just. Right. Little. So you, you, whoever you tap on becomes the screen. Because right now I tapped on Dan, Daniel, so I see him full screen. Who does everybody else think? That's not working for me. I see no one. No one. Who 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 is that? Thomas. Thomas, Thomas okay. Sam Brown just came in. Tom, I don't know why you're not seeing anybody because you're fully 
functional on my end. I'm going to stop making faces and I don't know it. <laughs> hey, Brown. See, because now if I change the presenter to Tom, we just get that. See, I can con now I, I can change it. All right, so I've got little Gary, big Gary. Now Sherry's not, should be on everybody's screen. Pam, you do this all day long. I don't think Pam. Us? Hello, Pam. Pam doesn't have um, a mic on, it looks like. Pam, can you hear us? Pam, if you can hear us. I can hear you guys just fine. All right, what is it? Right, Pam, wave if you can hear us. We can't hear Pam. Nope. And she probably cannot hear us because she's yakking at something. Mm -hmm. So let me messenger her. I did. Yeah, but. <laughs> uh, she didn't hear my. Uh... <laughs> That's cute. Well, I could see people briefly and then went away. She's having a conversation with somebody. Uh, hold on, Sherry. I'll make you the presenter and she'll see that message. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, Sherry, write on your message. Wave at us if you can hear us. Or thumbs up. Hold it up higher. I think she's totally oblivious to us. Now, actually, hold it back further, closer to your share. You're too close to your camera. You're up a little bit, and she should be able to you see. No, we are trying to call in, and of course, I don't see a password that is hard to find on the cell phone. It starts at 630. I just got a message from Andrea. Um, Andrea McClellan, hopping on now. Andrea's coming now. Sherry, you have the phone. Uh, do you have the email up handy for Pam? It has the password for the phone number on it. Okay, hold on. Um, hey, Sherry, the password is 2767-7762. Okay, and you're telling me this, why? Text it to Pam. Yeah, because she's ignoring. 2767-7762. Andrea should be coming on in a minute. Thomas still with us? I he's there. He's there, just no video. We got somebody else just came in. I don't know who it is. Elena? Might be. YK, yeah, it's Alina. Alina, you there? 
Um, <laughs> their speaker for tonight was a no-show. Last I heard. Who was their speaker? Who was their speaker? Uh, Senator Lewis, maybe. Oh yeah. Okay. Nikki, Nikki. Hi. Hey. Nikki. Hello. There's Andrea. Hello. Andrea. Sorry. Video. All Sorry. right. We we're celebrating my son's uh, graduation. We had a we had dinner at five o'clock, so I can be back here for six thirty. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm two minutes late. My apologies. Thank you so much. No worries, Andrea. <laughs> we're good with it. We're still all trying to figure it out ourselves. And also, too, I um. So I heard y'all when I came in. I heard you here at South Bayview's having their meeting too. So I'm gonna. I'm doing two. Well, unless I need to stay for the whole meeting, I might have to jump over just to pop my face <laughs> to a virtual meeting. <laughs> normally, hey guys, normally, I'd be in my car driving down the street. Hey guys, a little bit of courtesy when you go to speak, say who you are, because not all of us know who see or know everybody by image. Okay. So I guess we lost Jelena. Yeah. She'll get back in. I've, I've made it so that it's not going to lock. Sherry, you might as well go ahead and start your show. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, signing in to our first ever uh, league virtual meeting. And we have a guest speaker of Andrea, Councilwoman Andrea McClellan. You want to give police report? Um. I don't have that in front of me. Um, I can uh, send out the newsletter either tonight or in the morning when I get it finished and it will have the crime stats, uh, the treasure report, and uh, the real estate market analysis. Usually we try to get that out before the meeting, but we had a little bit of issues this week. So um, I guess, Andrea, if you're ready to go ahead, we can turn the floor over to you. Sure, I'm happy. Um, Sherry gave me uh, a handful of questions that I have answers to. Um, I will warn you, I don't think there's gonna be one answer that you like. So let me just set the expectations really, really, really low. <laughs> um, there's probably a couple answers we're not gonna like, uh, Andrea. <laughs> but they are, but they, are, they are what they are, so. Um, I'll, I'll go through them. The first question that you asked uh, was, when will the Crossroads Rec Center be opening back up? Uh, and what I should tell you is that, and you probably read this in the paper um, as, a, as it relates to our budget. And let me set the stage by saying that um, as a result of the, uh, the pandemic, uh, the city is expecting that we will have a loss in revenues of $15 million just for this last quarter of the fiscal year. So the city operates, our fiscal year is runs from July 1st to June 30th. So our current fiscal year, the fourth quarter is from April through June. So we're gonna, we expect a loss of revenue of about 15 million. For the next fiscal year, which is what we just adopted our budget, uh, fiscal year 21, which is our July 1st, we're anticipating modeling it out about a $40 million revenue loss uh, as a result of um, less revenue from uh, meals and beverage taxes because we're not eating out as much. Um, uh, fewer taxes as a result to lodging uh, taxes because people aren't staying in their hotels. Um, fewer admissions taxes because people aren't going to Chrysler Hall for Broadway or the symphony or the arts festival, et cetera. Now, we've just modeled it out. We don't know if it's gonna be $40 million for sure. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is we have a PhD economist who's our city manager, and he's, this is what he's done for a living for a while. Uh, our hope is that he's been extra conservative. And so as a result, the budget is really tight. We're going to go back and do what's called a reforecast each quarter as we get our in. And if we can then um, adjust and open more things back up, we will. So that's a, a lot of information to say that the Crossroads Rec Center will not be open. There are five, excuse me, six rec centers that were uh, selected to open when we are able to open, which will 
start as of July 1st in some capacity as it relates to um, for health and safety reasons. Those are Berkeley, Lambert's Point, East Ocean View, Norview, Huntersville, and um, the Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center. So, um, as we continue to bring revenues in, then we're going to continue to reevaluate. Uh, the next question was, uh, when will Crossroads be due for some upgrades? And again, with the budget, we basically took all future capital improvement projects, and those have been put on hold um, and, and frozen. So any project requests uh, for fiscal year 21, which is starting July 1st and carried forward to the following fiscal year. Um, so any new capital improvement project requests would have to be considered for fiscal year 22 or following. <clears throat> so Andrea, question. capital improvement, was that like as in paving, um, sewer upgrades, water upgrades? No. What specifically is capital improvement? Capital improvement tend to be uh, the larger projects, uh, like building um, uh, new a new roof, new building, um, addition to a park, things like that. You know, they, they tend to be in the realm of you know uh, seven figures, you know five million, ten million, twenty million, those types of things. Okay. Um, and, and then other like you know if it's half a million dollars here or there. I mean, everything's basically been put on hold. Now, what in the budget, um, what was not cut was public safety, human services, and our um, most of our infrastructure projects as it relates to water, um, et cetera. So anything that was already on the books for stormwater, which is the next question, will stay on. Um, in terms of stormwater and sewer line upgrades within crossroads, there are no plans at this point in the future. Um, I think that's, and then the next question. Hey guys, I don't know who, if y'all could. Um, Mary has her TV on because I'm picking it up. If I mute her, the noise goes away. Okay. It's a little distracting. Yeah, just a little bit. Is that better? Sorry. Yes, Were you watching something good at least? Whatever was on the TV. I hear you. <laughs> um, and the last question was uh, street paving. What's the typical timeline? Um, and uh, from free to burns, aside from the resurfacing of old Ocean View Road, which was done last year, there are no plans to resurface streets and crossroads at the moment. So I don't like to deliver any of those answers, but they are truthful and they are what they are. Now, Sherry, you and I had the opportunity to go uh, out and walk Northside um, recently. And at the time, one of the other issues that we anticipated from the budget was cutting our lawn care services and landscaping significantly. Um, and because of the outcry from me and the rest of my council members, they did restore that back into the budget. So we should be back to whatever is normal, which may not still be good enough, but it is what we would normally see. The park looked great for Memorial Day weekend. Well, that's good. I mean, basically- Not so much today, but- <laughs> The way they did that is they added an extra furlough day to all of our full-time employees. I mean, they're well. sort of- Things that they 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 laid off every part-time employee. Um, they cut every vacant position, and we furloughed an additional 100 full-time employees for this budget. Well, it would be kind of hard, Andrea, to enforce lawn on all of us as citizens if the city itself doesn't take care of its lawns. Gary, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one, my friend. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, you guys raised, uh, if you looked on next door, a lot of people were having a little bit of a fit if, you know, they're getting enforced on their lawn being too long, but yet the city's various lawns are too long. Yeah, but to that point, we're not enforcing any of that right now because our code enforcement people aren't out. 
um, they can send a letter, but there's nothing that they have not been out. Um, and quite honestly, all of every, you know, we talked about recreation centers, our libraries, as you probably know, all of our only our anchor branches will be the ones that are reopening. Um, so there's a lot of frustration there. Um, we're going to have, I mean, we've cut positions that were vacant in uh, code enforcement and planning. I mean, everybody took a hit. It's it's not pretty right now. And I hope that the <laughs> economy rebounds and we don't we don't see this and we're, you know, it's 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 not nearly as bad as we expected and we can open everything back up. But um, I think it's better to manage expectations to the worst and open up and then have to reclose, you know, down again. So that's where we are with that. So did the park rangers get furloughed? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. If they were part time, very likely they did, but I don't, I thought they were full time positions. I don't know the answer. I, I can find out and make a note. There's both. Yeah, um, I just I know that one we saw one of the Rangers a week or so ago. She was kind of concerned that that might happen. And I, I would hate for people to. Be out of work so that we get the grass cut more often. It's um, yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer about the park Rangers. Um, and, and I don't disagree and. Um, you know, I, I, well, I don't disagree. Um, the, uh, we have, we're not reopening any of our aquatic centers. So none of the pools are reopening. Um, there was a question if we were going to have lifeguards, the good news is they've taken, we will have lifeguards. They started last weekend. Um, they are only at ocean view park beach. Uh, those are the only areas and of the other parts of the beach. Throughout Ocean View, if they're not lifeguard stands, there are signs up that say swim at your own risk. But they will be picking up trash and doing all those sorts of things at the beach. That is that is the expectation there. So, um, so those are some of those fun things. Um, the mayor made a uh, had a press conference at six o'clock tonight. I don't know if you all had heard about that. And he announced that um, our Confederate monument is going to be taken down tonight. Good. Good. Uh, we, it needs to come down for safety, if nothing else. So that's uh, Gary. That's exactly the that's I, I haven't heard the um, I was at dinner with my family, so I did not watch it. It's on um, it's recorded on our city's Facebook page, but uh, legally the General Assembly Previously, we weren't allowed to to move that the general assembly this past session passed a legislation that would allow for us to do that. It would go into effect as of July 1st. It required a 30 day period after a public hearing to um, to make it available to museums or collectors. Um, and with that was the process that we were going through and we outlined that at a city, at city council meeting. I believe it was on June 2nd. After what happened in Portsmouth last night. We are concerned about people's safety and, we, and preserving that monument. And so the whole thing, the column will be taken down, but the, the top of the statue is supposed to be taken down tonight. So I was surprised. By that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, we also have, we also received a letter from the Sons of the Confederacy um, su in support of us moving that statue to Elmwood Cemetery um, to honor the war dead. So that was um, that's the city's plans if we don't receive an offer from a museum or a collector. I don't really have a whole lot of information beyond that. It's breaking news, uh, but I'm happy to answer questions if you have any. I think it's just a good idea to, you know, I'm neutral on the overall thing of it, but yeah, for its overall say, I don't get me wrong, I, I concern for the the actual thing. But personally, I'm more worried about people's safety than I am worried about a statue. Uh, so by taking out a statue or monument, even if it gets damaged in the process of removing it, at least nobody gets hurt. Where if somebody goes there and takes it down, a lot of people could get hurt. So um, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how things flow from here. Um, otherwise, you know, 
the city of Norfolk relative to our peer cities and throughout the country, um, knock on wood, um, so far we seem to be managing pretty well. And I give a lot of credit to our chief of police who seems to have struck a good balance. Um, and uh, so we are, we've had no violence, no looting. Um, so thus far, we seem to be in pretty good shape. Um, the other thing that I would say is uh, we also, the mayor announced a, a new commission that he's going to chair. Uh, I will be vice chair on um, social equity and economic opportunity. Um, and it really extends for the entire city. And it's, while we're certainly gonna be addressing uh, racial inequity and systemic racism and other issues, it, you know, it, it's, it, it extends to everybody. You know, there are parts of Norfolk, um, not far from where you guys are, who have, who, who, who don't have economic opportunity, who don't have opportunities. And we've got to look at our procurement system. We've got to look at, you know, housing and everything else. So uh, we've got to look at the digital divide. I mean, you probably know people who don't have access to either the internet or at least good in, good enough internet to do what you need to do if you're going to have these Zoom calls or if you're going to have, you know, working from home or doing school from home. So we need to be looking at all those sort of things. I thought with, with so many cell phones, <clears throat> smartphones, that everybody had some access. So some access is, is probably right, um, but it, it's not doing your homework on a cell phone doesn't really work very well. Or you're, or you're paying for a really high data feed if you're anybody other than um, for uh, T-Mobile. Because like my T-Mobile, I have unlimited high speed, um, but I also have a pretty expensive plan where other people may not have that money to have that plan. So we, the city is receiving approximately $21 million in CARES Act funding. Uh, we, um, it's reimbursable, so it's not just a, a big, uh, deposit into the city's bank account. We have very strict rules as to how we can utilize this, and it has to be specific to COVID. Uh, it can't be for general ongoing operations, and it has to be spent by the end of this calendar year. So we're trying to analyze how we're going to do that. And I've really um, pushed the idea of focusing on um, uh, broadband connectivity and ensuring that all of our residents have have connectivity. So. If you all have any feedback along those lines, I don't know if it's an issue or not in your neighborhood. I'd certainly be well open to that too. I can tell you, Pam Brown has an issue with it. She's um, she's texting me and Sherry right now. Um, her cox is basically out. There's no other word for it. Cox is Pam. Pam is with us. Pam, what I have what I uh, understand to be the case is that if you don't have your video showing. It, you can, it doesn't take as much bandwidth, so it's a little bit easier to participate in these. But Pam, have you had Her <laughs> overall connection is upstairs in my home office. So I don't know why it's different from, from a Dell computer down here. So. Well, you said it's it's better in your home office or? Oh, I, I'm on web that's almost all day long at work. Yeah. And, and we're upstairs and I don't know why it's different for, you know, here. Like, probably on the computer. I it out. Yeah, I was gonna say that doesn't sound like a Cox issue. That sounds like something internal. No, no I'm, I, Cox, Cox is a separate issue. Okay. They're, they're terrible. Okay, they are terrible. Their price is high, and their service is loud. They have been here to my house three times inside of three weeks. Okay, I had to go to the Barrett Stork, the, the, the VP of Government Relations, to get any results out of Cox at all. And the North Atlantic location, those people are no service whatsoever. I'm glad you went to Barrett. That's good. I was, that was going to be my recommendation. Well, and, and we're going to have to call the lady, the escalation lady, back again tomorrow morning. Because this has always worked before. Okay, we go to, get, to replace the remote and we replace the box. All of a sudden, nothing works. It's, I, I'm about over it. So, I mean, we have to have the internet, you know, to work at home. So. And I be, I, I'm going to cut cocks for everything, except for the internet. It's just, it's getting old. 
And Andrew, she's not the only one complaining about it in the no no section of Norfolk. Um, there's a lot of people who are having various issues and it just seems like Cox really doesn't care. Um, a side note, everybody, please keep your language clean because this is going to YouTube eventually. Um, okay. So we don't need it taken down from language, but yes, it, uh, well, it is a problem. In our language is not that clean for Cox, I can tell you that. But I, Pam, this I think is a video. Was, Pam, I think he was trying to warn me. He was worried oh. that I might say something. Oh, okay. No, actually, it was towards Pam. She's three times <laughs> used language that YouTube will uh, block the video. <laughs> um, but yes, it is a problem in the no no section of Norfolk. Yeah, I do see a lot of complaints on next door about um, outages on. You know, they're always asking, is anybody else having problems with Cox in the area? Everybody. And, you know, I have, direct, I have employees that directly report to me, even the Salem area, Virginia Beach, where Cox is monopoly there, too. And she's Pam, it's like the whole system's overwhelmed because everybody's working at home. I, I do think that there's some... There is, uh, I, I, I imagine it's got to be tough for Cox. I mean, it's everybody is at home. And if you're not working and your kids are there, they're streaming something for school, or if they're like my kids, they're streaming crap watching TV. Can right. I say that, Terry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I know that feeling because, of course, I got new, uh, really expensive toys. <laughs> one of my now three, one of my 360 cameras is about two grand i got it in today so when i live broadcast it really eats up a lot of data and and i don't use cox because of that so what other what other issues are you guys um what, what questions do you have comments that you'd like for me to hear i was pretty uh, um a, Shock! Tommy was the only one who uh, rebuked Paul Riddick over his comment comment publicly. I've actually Saturday I went to the uh, feed the city and, and caught a couple other people, and I was kind of shocked in their attempt to defend his comment. Um, that's let me let me address that for those who might not be familiar with uh, what happened. Oh, look, there you are, Pam. Yeah, I, I clicked the video button. Got to remember that because. Um, Upstairs, I'm using a double monitor system with a laptop that's closed, so we don't have video. Okay, so here we can use video because we're downstairs on another computer. So now we've discovered this. So uh, the last council meeting, we were having a discussion from economic development about how they were trying to reach out to all of our small businesses, particularly our restaurants. Uh, there was a comment made uh, that as a result of some backlash, against uh, Chinese restaurants. Um, they've been really making sure to go out and make sure they have everything that what they need. And uh, my colleague made a comment that um, that we shouldn't be supporting Chinese businesses because they had plenty of money, I'm paraphrasing, um, and that we should only be supporting black businesses. Um, and I, Gary, to, to your point, I had, I if you watch the video, I unmuted myself because I was, you know I'm not somebody to hold my tongue. Yeah, I noticed it. <laughs> uh, but Tommy, Tommy spoke up, and I thought his comments were actually better than anything I could have said because of the experience he has. He has two students in his school that have parents that own Chinese restaurants, and he essentially said, you know, they're not making hand over fist money. They're barely getting by, and they also had to close. And um, it, well, I wish you make a subtle apology and then he sort of stuck his foot back in his mouth um, i wished he had showed up saturday because the produce that was done with the ricky uh, davis foundation and stuff came from lettuce produce i would have introduced him to the owner of lettuce produce she is a 60 year old asian woman so anyway and, I, <laughs> I will tell you that kind of a based on who owns it you know i just use it based on food and service and that kind of thing I don't care who owns it, you know. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, listen, um, it wasn't appropriate, uh, but to, it wasn't going to change the behavior. No. And, um, 
you know, we, we just have to move on because, you know, it just quite honestly, I didn't want to give him any more airtime. And I think, right. you know, Tommy said what he needed to, what we all needed to say. It's wrong. I've anybody's email me, I've explained it. My my position as I'm sitting here, and I will tell you my, all of my colleagues feel the same way. So nobody supports that comment. That's good. So, yeah. So you so you answered the questions, but they were kind of you went through them kind of quickly. Uh, I, I just want to get back to the um, say like the stormwater, the sewer, and the the street paving. So, so what is a typical time frame? If we had money, if there was plenty of money, what is the typical time frame for, for upgrades usually? Hey, Sherry, not to interrupt you a second, but Pam, you got something in the background that's uh, blaring out the feed. Okay. Uh, so I can, um, if I mute you, it goes away. don't like uh, using the microphone on this computer. I usually would use a headset, but I thought Bob was going to be in here with me. Uh, if I use a headset, he wouldn't be able to hear. So, okay. Why don't you just, if, if you can just put it on mute, and then when you want to speak, just unmute yourself. Yep. The little button down the bottom. There you go. That's awesome. Okay, right, Sherry. Sherry, go back at it. Your question was, what's the typical time frame? Depends depends on the extent of the project, uh, but they have stormwater has a whole host of projects. For example, that they um, they try and schedule out. So I don't know where Crossroads fits in that time frame. And similar with um, with paving, what we could do is we could have somebody at your next meeting. We you choose. Do you want streets? Do you want stormwater uh, or do you want sewer? Because those are all different. Those are three different. That's public. That, that's that's transit, public works, and public utilities. What's the cheapest? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the the challenge is, of course, as soon as you repave, somebody's going to come. You know, Virginia Natural Gas is going to come in and tear up the streets. It seems like. Oh, but, oh I, I almost have the potholes in memory, and it, it, you know, I make the the obstacle course down my street every day to avoid the uh, the craters and you can call and have them come out and patch but if what they're patching is crumbling too i mean you know i've been here for 10 years yeah they're doing a terrible job of that i've been here for 10 years and and it's the same road and, and so I, I that's why i was curious is that like is it like every 15 20 years do i have to another wait another 10 years <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm going to make a note here. I, I'm, I ran into my living room and I don't have a pen. So I'm going to make a note on my phone. My apologies. I'm not, I'm not texting right now. Um, so. I just posted out your uh, thing about Kenny to the various social media points. So I wasn't texting earlier either. I was actually, I, I'm using my phone to post information and updates. Okay. We can see if we can have somebody come in and talk about roads and the process, et cetera, at that, at that time. That, yeah. That'd be great. Storm drainage would be a good priority too. Right. So stormwater. We've had, we've had discussions. I know Sherry, you sent me a bunch of pictures and we had people talk, but has anybody had come to the actual Civic League to talk about stormwater before? Um, when we first started the Civic League, yes, but recently, no. Okay. Uh, they identified, they did come out and ride around with me and they did identify, um, you know, places that flooded that are, you know, ongoing. There there are no storm drains. They're trying to figure out why the water's just not draining. Up there by SSS Car Wash, that street, it it, it floods terribly with right. every heavy rain. Right. Of course, my my intersection is is bad. It's the lowest spot on the block, and and there's no storm drain, so it just kind of all pools to right here, and it will flood 
from here off from my house at Westcliff, like halfway down to Crossroads School. I mean, when your neighborhood was built, it was was it part of um, a different county and it wasn't tied into the city's infrastructure and we're still sort of making up for that. It seems like from the paper street towards Little Creek, there's no storm drains. It's not tied into anything. Some some roads have ditches, some roads nothing. Um, so I don't know if it was different developer. The other thing to maybe look into it is maybe they've collapsed. Yeah, that is that is an issue in some um, in some of our neighborhoods, and they can put a camera in there and try and figure that out. So um, well, let's see what Sherry. I'll get with you in terms of when your next what your meeting dates are, and we can prioritize which. You know who you want to have, but I'm I'm happy to have a ask a city uh, department to come out for you know have somebody different at each of your meetings. Well, it looks like awesome. we'll be doing virtual for a little while until we find a new home since Crossroads <laughs> Rec Center will be closed. Yes, sir. You could uh, maybe you could meet at um, is Coaster Coffee open in the evenings? Not yet. Yeah, it's probably and it's too many people to have in a in that that setting at this point. Yeah. Yeah, Coaster Coffee was our first uh, thought. And then what? There's a couple churches maybe. Um, I was kind of hoping that maybe we'd have more than our regular normal faces for the virtual meeting. Um, but it seems like we have the same the same faces again. <clears throat> I think a lot of people are kind of struggling with the technology part of things. I mean, some other meetings that I'm attending are being done on GoToMeeting, and um, we, you know, they struggle with that at first, and then they worked out the kinks just like we're doing here. And um, a lot of people are using Zoom, and Zoom has its good things and it has its bad things. But the the, the WebEx here, I use this at work all day long, and it just, uh, I think it allows you a lot more control from a host perspective. Yeah. I think um, they're kind of getting used to this. I talked to another city council person who uh, he put it out to somebody else's civic league meeting and talked. He would not use Zoom. He would only use WebEx if we, if we were to invite him. So that's one reason why we are using it. I will inform everybody. I'm paying for the ability to call in and stuff out of my personal pocket, which doesn't bother me because I think we need to do this. Honestly, I think that the city should be providing each civic league with a WebEx account. Um, and if you want to send me information about what what that looks like, I mean, I know a Zoom account for me costs fifteen dollars a month. So yeah, I would rather pay it out of my pocket than see another employee put laid off. Yeah. Well, I, I hear you. Trust me. Um, our Civic League doesn't have enough money to really afford this, but of course we need to be able to meet. And I made sure we had the technology for those people who could not um, video in, at least be able to phone in. But for our first time, actually, we're not too bad because being I'm the actual hosting of this, I've watched about 12 people trying to connect and obviously having problems. So, um, and I'm getting messages here and there that I'll have to follow up with after the fact of what's their problem. That's awesome. Mine didn't work until the, the link Sherry sent me, the second one. So I'm not sure what, what was wrong with the I sent that from the uh, calendar, Gary. Right. I, I that to her. I think it's uh, the works. calendar. Um, we have to promote our calendar on uh, CrossroadsCivicLeague.com more because it's right there. I enter it in and it works. So, um, yeah, we need to, that's our safe place for, for it. Else is on the call. I see Nikki, Thomas, Daniel, Daniel. Um, the, the family, the Gregor and Carolyn Ayers. Ellen came <laughs> in, and a couple other people tried to get in, but they're having problems. I've actually not locked the meeting. I left it so people could join even after the fact, and they're just, I, I'm just noticing and getting messages on my cell phone that people are having problems. This version doesn't have the participant list like the one at work has, so that's why I can't seem to. I have participants. I think if you just go down to the little on the bottom 
at least on my on my interface there's a right. there's a total right now there's a total of seven participants but i've i've mm -hmm. blocked off the attempt blocks so that only i'm getting it okay. done it doesn't keep oh, okay. fucking everybody else gotcha okay that's why i just Otherwise, andrea would be getting an alert every time somebody tries to connect Sasha says hi. Oh. Sasha says hi. Okay. Congratulations to your son, by the way, Andrea. I did like his graduation, alternative graduation photos. There was, those were pretty cool. Thank you. I like all the yard signs. I think those are cool. The hot dog suit was really cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's a weird time to be graduating, that's for sure. So, um, so I don't know what's happening yet with Norfolk Public Schools in terms of the reopening. Um, we're still sort of waiting to see there. Um, like every other parent, I really hope that they reopen. <laughs> the governor put his guidance out today about it. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen that yet. That was on uh, the universities. So he had uh, a couple of days ago talked about K-12, but you know, we'll, we'll see. I would just say that you all stay safe and um, I, you know, I know people have different opinions about masks, but when you wear your mask, it's not really protecting you. It's probably protecting somebody else. Well, mine says stay six feet away. <laughs> so I have a question about the mask. Yes, ma'am. If, it if it's supposed to be mandatory, how come everywhere I go, there's so many people who aren't wearing them? Because all they have to do is claim ADA and you can't force it. Um, Sherry, I think it's really dependent on... Um, because the health department, which is really the person who's going to be enforcing it, um, can't be everywhere. It's going to be dependent on the business owner for the most part enforcing. So well, I'm just, went, to, <laughs> just went to the little New York cosmetic supply place and got the nice flower, little flowered one that I can actually deal with. So I didn't want to get into any discussions with people about masks. So I just went and found one I could deal with. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's what that's what you got to do. Well, the, no, big, I the biggest thing also is ADA. People are claiming I have ADA issues, and that's it. You can't you can't go any further. Yeah, um, I I went to a restaurant uh, earlier this week on Monday, and um, we came in and we were going to eat outside. So I hadn't thought to bring a mask because I figured I was going to be eating outside. Obviously, you can't eat with a mask on. And, but to go, I had to go through the restaurant. So I had to wear a mask through the restaurant. And then they said, well, if you're outside and you have to come into the bathroom, so I understood that. But they also took my name and my phone number. And I realized that for contact tracing, if anybody were to, um, wow. if a, a, somebody at the restaurant who works there or somebody who was visiting there, it allows them to be able to contact anybody who was there that night. So that's what, so we had a great presentation about contact tracing. Do you all know what contact tracing is? I had, I wasn't familiar with the concept, but essentially it's a disease detective. And it's, you know, once somebody is diagnosed, they are, they basically go through what you, what you've done in the last, I think, 48 hours. And if you spend 72, 72 and then they, they try and go back and then they contact anybody that with whom you've been in touch uh, for them to, Try and isolate or um, watch symptoms. So it's a big puzzle. And, and again, Norfolk, we've done pretty well. Our numbers are, are in pretty good shape. So um, I just would ask you guys to keep up what you're doing. And I know it's hard. I've got three kids in my house. And trust me, we have fights about this every day. But, um, you know, I know from a city council standpoint, we will continue to, I assume, meet virtually as well. So um i have a question yes, is there any progress on the rehabilitation of the sections of housing down in downtown norfolk uh, are you talking about the saint paul's project yes yes ma'am um well that because of the uh because of covid was put on hold um, we put a temporary hold on that about six months or so. I think they're supposed to get back uh, working in the October timeframe of the portion of 
that St. Paul's area that was supposed to be um, moving folks out. I think they've been in touch with. I don't have the specific numbers. I I I think something along the lines of you know, eight family the two hundred. Each each unit gets case managers for everybody in that unit to ensure that they are talking to them about employment, transportation, healthcare, education, um, and workforce development training, et cetera, um, and helping them to find an alternative location, whether it's within our, our current public housing community, um, helping them with a voucher to find another appropriate safe dwelling within Norfolk or elsewhere. Um, and then they have the option of whether or not they want to move back once the new units are online in three years or so, um, it is it's it's not going to be perfect, and it's very very difficult. The goal ultimately is to deconcentrate poverty, uh, but it is it's very challenging. I don't know if I answered your question or not. You did. Thank you very much. the The issue here is is big picture. You know, we have to look at the huge the big picture for the city of Norfolk, and not everybody wants to do that. It's um it's tough. I mean, and I it, you probably heard me say this before. Norfolk has forty nine percent of the public housing units for the entire Hampton Roads region. So we have about two hundred forty two thousand in population. The region's one point seven million. We have essentially fifty percent half of the public housing for that entire region. So we have a large concentration of poverty, and those units are tend to be built in the fifties and the sixties. And from an infrastructure standpoint, they're often in our flooded areas and it's, it's very, it's, they're not great conditions and it's not fair for the folks who live there. And to just put something, bring a new back and put everybody back in to that same location doesn't really solve the problem either. So it's, it's challenging and we're trying to be, we're trying to do it with grace and give people dignity and help them to have a better life. But it's scary. Some folks have lived there a long time. And it's that's their safety net. So, you know, it's not an easy answer by any means. Is that kind of what happened with Broad Creek? Mm -hmm. They tore it down and build it right back. Same no, people, same place. No, because Broad Creek doesn't have the same people. Um, Broad Creek has a real mix um, of income levels and housing that is voucher based and home ownership. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you've got three, four, five hundred thousand dollar homes in the middle of um, units that have uh, uh, choice vouchers or what people would call section eight vouchers. But it but Broad Creek wasn't a slam dunk either. And not everybody could come back who wanted to come back. So it wasn't it wasn't just building it back up and putting everybody back in. So um, but I there is a website and I'm going to get it wrong. The URL is, I think it's St. Paul's district.org. I can. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Which where they have updates. Um, Angela Williams Graves is co chairing that with Paul Riddick. She's more like she's chairing it. And she does, a, I think she's actually doing a really good job on that. So we're working a lot with the com uh, church community. Um, another update would be it, I don't know if anybody participated in the prayer march. In Norfolk on Sunday, um, I did. I have never seen that many people in Norfolk, ever. I mean, thousands of people. It was it was incredible, and it was a positive. No, no name calling. It was you know, it was just it was really lovely. There's a lot of unity. People of all stripes were there, and um, the chief of police got up and spoke, and he said that he's working with. Um, Bishop McBath from Calvary Revival and some other church groups to work on an accountability study uh, for what the police is doing to work with the churches to ensure that they are comfortable. Um, I um, I know that there's a I'm gonna I'm gonna wade into a dangerous area, so watch out. Um, I know that a lot of folks about are calling defund the police. I don't think Norfolk has any interest in defunding the police. Um, I do appreciate the spirit behind some of those, which is ensuring that we have our resources appropriately spread out so that we're talking about mental health and education as well as the police. But I actually think we're doing a pretty good job. Um, so 
These are tough decisions and discussions. I do support having a citizen review panel to have an outside group looking at when we do have issues with the police and internal review. I don't think I'm going to get enough support to actually stand that up. But um, that's if you wanted to know where I stand on that, I don't. I don't agree with the idea of defunding the police. I think reform in some ways is appropriate and good to consider, uh, but we're not going to we're not going to do away with public safety. So I don't think there's any appetite for that, and I don't think it's the right thing to do. So. How's that for ending with, on a real heavy note? <laughs> We're talking about events, Andrea. Saturday, of course, they had the uh, feeding of uh, the city, Norfolk, um, at Military Circle. Kenny and, of course, the chief of police were there. They went through 55,000 pounds worth of food, 3,820 cars. I ended up with 150 bags of vegetables that I took to uh, Colonial Heights Church, sat in the parking lot until almost 1030, uh, giving vegetables out, then took what I had left down to Knox Towers on Colonial, um, Colonial Avenue and gave it to them. So, you know, and even there, it was multiple people helping out uh, and um, multiple people receiving and no issues whatsoever. I mean, Norfolk's not perfect, but we're doing a lot better than a lot of cities are right now. And um, I would wholeheartedly I, agree. I've never seen issues happening in Minneapolis ever happen here. And we have a different flavor it, to our city here than they have at the beach either. So that's why I said, you know, the Mermaid City kind of grows on you. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, and honestly, I think. A lot of it's because of civic leagues like you guys, right? Is that it's that neighborhood connection and people getting to know your neighbors and trusting your neighbors and having relationships and being able to have your your CRO come in and talk to you guys about what's happening. Um, you know, saying, okay, we'll get something from Stormwater. And I think that's really important. So anyway. I'm babbling. Is there anything else that <laughs> I can talk? You know, you know I could talk all night long, but anything yeah. else? Sherry, is there anything else you need to put out, or Nikki, anything you want to put out? Nikki's at the other Civic League. No I'm chance. She's still on ours. I'm at both. So quiet. I'm listening. I'm actually in both. I'm because because South Bayview's on Zoom and you guys are on WebEx, so I've got I'm doing double duty. I'm listening to both. Multitasking. <laughs> so what interesting is going on at South Bayview? <laughs> exactly. What's um, going on there? Well, Councilman Smeagol is out South Bayview, so. He came, he, so you're awesome. at one and he's at the other. So, I, which there was, a, they were supposed to have a different speaker and he was not able to attend. So I think he was the, uh, he was a, a long shot. Can you please come into the meeting? Um, but as far as anything that's happening with us, I didn't get a chance to send it out. And I don't know if um, Councilman McClellan, if you, did you mention about the free mask giveaway? No, I didn't. I put that on my Facebook page. Could you, could you give some details? I can, as soon as I pull it up that way, I won't say the wrong thing. Hold on two seconds. This is, what am I looking for? Andrea, you said it's on your page? Yes. So the free mask giveaway to the public is going to be tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's going to be at the Berkeley Community Center. Um, and I thought that there was another one that was going to be, um, did they pick another location as well? Or was it just in Berkeley? Let me double check and make sure because I thought that I don't know if they extended it to another location or not, but I can find out for you. But the other thing is, is there is going to be a uh, free testing for COVID if you're That's interested. Right. And I also put that on my um, my web page, and I know it's on the city's uh, Facebook page, or my Facebook page, I should say, and the city's Facebook page. No, it's yeah. So it is just at it's just at um, Berkeley. So it's going to be from 10 to 12 and you have you have a, that's a free mask giveaway to the public. So that's the next big thing that's coming up in the community that uh, that um, we are pushing out. And another thing, too, is just to remind everybody about the census. You know, a lot of people have already um, completed it, but there's lots of areas in the city of Norfolk there where people have not completed the census. So we're trying to encourage everybody to participate. Um, as we all know that the census is very important to allocate money to our city. And so you over $2,000 per person for 10 years is what uh, gets 
counted to our communities and it, it funds so many things. So um, we all need the, all the money we can get. So <laughs> we wanna make sure that everybody fills out the census. So I've been sending out information to all of my distribution lists, to my civic leagues. And I know you all have done a good job with putting it in your newsletters. So I try to put as much information as I can um, for that. So if there's any information that you have, and then also too, all the good things that you're doing, all of the things that, um, the good things that you're doing in your community, send it to me so I can send it out so that everybody else in the city of Norfolk knows how well neighborhoods are doing um, with the food pantries and the cleanups and everything. If you have information you wanna share, send it to me so I can send it out to everybody else. Because I think at this time, I think a lot of people want to know and they wanna see what other neighborhoods are doing to, to get through this. And I think that's important too. Um, side note on free masks, um, I got on Deaconess and of course resources I have, Knott's Towers as of yesterday got 300 masks, all cloth, I got them all donated. So, um, and Sherry, you already know about it, I've been talking to you about through the food pantry because I've probably got another 100 and 120 coming in. That's great. Awesome, Gary. So question for you guys. Um, we just we just had an election in May. We have another primary coming up June twenty third. Do y'all have any issues or problems with uh, voting or absentee? Pam, do you have any feedback there? Um, I went I went to you know vote like normal. I didn't see any any real issues. I mean, I think they took. I mean, all the protocols were in place. They handed you a a pen that you don't reuse, they hand you a folder with a ballot that, and you go put your own ballot in the machine. I mean, it looked pretty seamless to me. Great. Um, I didn't really see any real issues. Um, uh, I, I have, never could get my absentee ballot online. I tried several times and I just finally, well, I'll just go vote in person. <clears throat> I ended up calling the city to get my absentee ballot because um, the online was giving me grief. So the um, the new laws will go into effect for the November. Um, so they, right now, it's, it's uh, there's no excuse absentee. They've made COVID just a an illness, so basically there's no excuse. But the General Assembly passed the laws where you'll have 45 day no excuse absentee voting um, starting after July 1st. So essentially, starting no, for the November election. Are they going to do that in the bottom floor of the courthouse, as I had probably heard? Or so I think there's going to be a real push to uh, as so at Norfolk numbers, I believe, were something like 80 percent of our uh, uh, ballots cast in May were absentee, and we're going to try and get a large number of uh, encourage people to vote absentee as well in November. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, Pam, I mean, I think that first floor is probably we're going to have. Um, uh, That's what I heard from Mike Z. Yeah, yeah. So we're just not sure what it's going to look like. Um, if there's going to be a second wave, you know, what's going to happen with public health at that point. So we're preparing for everything, quite honestly. Andrea, of your 80%, how much of it was actual true mail in? I think yeah, yeah. That, I think that was eighty percent. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot where, yeah, it was it was. Did absentee type thing. No, I think if you had an absentee ballot, you'd spoil it when you brought it in, and then you'd actually vote while you were there. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm I'm new to this as well, but um, and and we had more votes cast for 2020 than we did in 2018. Only slightly more. But we didn't have a major drop off for municipal elections. Considering the mayor and I were running unopposed, and the only opposition was in school board. That was pretty impressive, but it was still really low. I think maybe 11 or 12 percent turnout. So, um, also in November, you're going to have it's going to be a big ballot. Obviously, you have the presidential, but you're going to have a couple of referendums. You're going to have a referendum on the casino. Citizens will get to decide yes or no whether or not they want a casino. Uh, there's going to be a referendum on redistricting an amendment to the Constitution to create a redistricting commission. Um, and 
trying to think if there's another element on there. I think so the Virginia ones. 21 was successful in getting their their um, their referendum done. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. the uh, the redistricting uh, would have um, three Democrats, three Republicans, and I think they appoint. I, I don't know. It's it's the Republicans appoint three, Democrats appoint three, and then there's one that they mutually agree upon, and they all have to agree on the maps. And if they don't agree on the maps, then it goes to the the courts, and then the courts decide. But recognize the courts are also chosen by the politicians, so it's not really nonpartisan, and it's not re it's still political. It, it's so anyway. It is. But those two, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, the, so yeah, it'll be an interesting November for sure. Um, you, I don't have any other questions. I, I happy to do this again in the future, and um, I encourage you guys to continue to do this. Come, you don't have to be invited. To, you know, we we are on the second Thursday. You're always free to join in. Um, as you were talking about gambling, it is kind of an interesting note. Chesapeake um, Planning Commission uh, recommended no. On for, Rosie's. Uh, for Rosie's. Yeah. So we'll 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 see how that all plays out. At any rate, my recommendation a casino would really be good up there by military circle. That way, you wouldn't have to worry about flooding. <laughs> well, did, did anybody on here get polled and have take about a fifteen minute survey? I know I did. On what issue? Bam. On the casino. I want to say it was three weeks ago. I was sitting here answering cell phone, and you know. You know, rarely I answer it if I don't know the number, but it's about a 15 minute in person on the phone survey that they, they wanted detailed answers. I was because I was interested to know, but they wouldn't tell us who was sponsoring the survey. But I got the impression it was it was an organization that was that was pro casino. I think the developer is going to be putting a lot of money into getting people on board with the casino. And I think they're going to be pushing and in, in, in large measure the idea that the casino is going to help us build schools. Well, we could always uh, get bring the US, the SS United States back down. It's looking for a home and turn it into a floating casino. Then we wouldn't have to worry about flooding. Because if you, you, you might not, have, well, you would be long enough, Andrew, you remember the SS United States. It's been uh, floating around here abandoned for years. It's in Philadelphia now being refurbished and being turned uh, hotel casino kind of concept, but it's looking for a permanent home. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> okay, it looks like we are probably about out of time. Um, Andrea, thank you as always. Good to see you. See you guys too. Everybody be well. If you need anything, uh, Andrea dot McClellan at Norfolk dot gov. Shoot me an email. All right. Take care. Bye bye, guys. Thank you. Uh, for I will send the uh, newsletter out as soon as I get it done with uh, all the reports. For the Civic League people, if we're going to meet physically, we are going to have to be looking for a new home temporarily or permanently. One of the two. Okay. Uh, we'll think on it. Let's think it. Maybe Coaster or one of the churches. I don't know what else is around here that that we could. Coaster use. has a nice conference room back there. I think I actually went and talked to Coaster, and they said no way for a little while because they're concerned with uh, how many people would show up, da 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 da, and the social distancing, and that. Uh, Thomas here. What if, would it be it's nice to Daniel. Oh, this is Nikki. It's nice to hear y'all and see y'all. I'm going to make that one of those so like half the moon parks in the like in the neighborhood. What in the neighborhood? The one on uh, I forget what street, but it's not Hyde Park. Like those little half moon parks. Right. Do it outside. Yeah, we could always do it outside as long as the weather was agreeable. No, I mean no presentations or anything on PowerPoint, but yeah, well we never get those to work anyway, so no loss. <laughs> <laughs> we made it to Mark Legend. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, so, so I don't know if the American Legion, if that would be a possibility. I don't know what y'all think about it. In the cables. Cables, yeah. Behind it. That, that that might be uh, not so good when it's freezing outside or 100 degrees. But we'll, we'll work on it. Hopefully things are a little better when it's freezing out. All right, and by that time, maybe the rec centers will be back open. Um, or, or we'll just be doing virtual. What does everybody think of this virtual? I still can't see anyone. I had to go into my settings, Thomas. I had to go into my settings and change which, um, what line. I don't, I changed it and it worked. Thomas, I, um, reach out to me and I'll help you set it up. Okay. I've, I've been in WebEx once before and it worked, but this time, I don't know. Uh, Thomas, I sent you my cell phone number. Okay. But Call me and I'll set up a temporary one and we can make it work and see what you need to do. All right, sounds good. Now, are you dialed in, Thomas, or are you on a computer, by the way? Uh, no, I'm on a phone, but I clicked the link in the uh, okay. Gmail. Or in the iPhone or, iPhone or uh, Android? Android. All right, I know what, I know what the problem is, and I'll, I can help you get through that sounds good i had to change drivers that's what i did for the camera to work anyways well gregors good seeing y'all good, right. good to hear you anyways thomas <laughs> guys well i'll send a newsletter out as soon as i get it done stay safe stay safe that worked pretty well <laughs>